to tell you today that God has called you for such a time as this. For such a time as this when there is a war that is raging and is calling you and I today as young people to go out to the world and to preach the good news, to bring hope to those who are hopeless. To Esther Omodakai says, you, you, you've been placed as a queen. Right now, you've been enjoying the splendors of being in royalty. But let me tell you something, that is not your purpose. God has not called you for those splendors. God has not called you for that status. God has called you for such a time as this, when his people need deliverance. And I'm here to tell you today that when God has placed you, he has placed you for such a time as this, when his people need you to get them out of Egypt. And so it started as a conversation between two guys saying that young people are further away from God than ever before, that Satan has raged a war against them, that there is a crisis of where young people are committing suicide, where young people are unemployed, where young people are facing all sorts of trials and tribulations. And so there needs to be a platform where we can bring young people closer to God. And that is where Youth for 12 came from. Youth for 12 came from the need to bring young people closer to God so that they are reunited with Him and so that they can go out there and preach and bring hope to others. And so I'm asking you today, what has God called you to do? What has God called you to go? Where has God called you to go to at this very moment? And I like um, this thing, Oti City CBZ. And perhaps sometimes we might feel as if we are inadequate for God's call. And I'm here to tell you today that you have been called because you are chosen. First Peter says, Oti, you are a chosen generation. What? A royal priesthood. Now, now you have to notice something here. David says, you anoint my head with oil. An anointment was something reserved for a special kind of people in Israel. For three kinds. First, it was for the priest, and then for the prophet, and then for kings. These people were anointed, selected, elected, and set apart from everybody else for them to lead or to serve God wherever God would have placed them. Not anyone was just anointed, but it was a few, a very special few who were anointed. So when we say we are a royal priesthood, that means God has then set us apart from everybody else for a specific mission and a specific purpose. For you are chosen, you are anointed, you are a royal priesthood. Amen. And here's something. As you are chosen, you are chosen, set apart to be different. Now it is hard to be different. It is hard for us to, to understand what as we are chosen, we are meant to be different. Uh, maybe if I had to ask all of you guys to stand, and then one person stands up, and then everybody else remains seated. The person who is standing will feel very self-conscious. And perhaps they might think, oh, what if maybe I might have heard wrong. Maybe uh, there's something wrong with my ears or the instruction. And then might proceed to sit down. But the problem is not with the instructor. The problem is not with the instruction. But the problem is with everybody else. But because that person remains standing alone, he feels very self-conscious and so will sit down because everybody else is sitting down. As Christians, we don't recognize that God wants us to remain standing even while the world is sitting down. God has chosen us and as we he has chosen us, He wants us to keep standing even though everybody else seems to be going the wrong direction. The Israelites did not understand as that they were the chosen nation. They were meant to be different because when you are different, you are then you then show others what the right way is. Everyone else was going the wrong way and God said, I have chosen you so that they can see through you who this is the right way. But they wanted to be like others. Why don't we have a king just like the other nations? Let us get rid of that mentality of just like the other nations whereby we want to be like everyone else. But let me tell you something. You have been chosen. That means you 
are the light of the world. And those who are in the light, those who have the light, cannot follow those who walk in darkness. Amen. And then Gideon says, along with Moses, who am I to go when you are sending me? And then, oh, let me just say this, as in court. You guys saw such an example here behind us. Such an example is basically what the outcome of the work that we do is, essentially. And that's where our name comes from. Youth 412 comes from 1 Timothy 4, verse 12, which says, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Rather, what? Set an example. That's where then the name comes from. Which we want to be the youth of First Timothy 4 verse 12. The youth for 12. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Which is why if you listen to our podcast, you might hear me saying, and welcome to the Youth for 12 podcast where we engage in conversations which inspire, empower, and encourage us to be an example to other young believers in conversation in spirit and in love, faith, and purity. My name is the Lord Fiam Sad. And I'm here, your host of the Youth for 12 podcast. Where is SID Media? I hope they were listening. Gideon says, but how? How can I be able to go when you are sending me? I am inadequate. I don't have the ability to go. And then Ubulumonu says to him, go in the strength that you have. If you know the story that he done, you will know Uguti, Ukidion was just a farmer, but God was calling him into war. And so how can he use the strength of a farmer to go into battle when he needs the strength of a warrior? And it's very confusing to me. And it reminds me of a time whereby we had to go to the shop and we had Iman, Yogyo Tenga, Ama Chips. And then Master Sfi and our partner, Shawe Boom, we see Wuti, no, the money that we have is not sufficient to actually buy what we wanted to buy. And then we start to panic with my friends. And then there's a man who sees us and he sees our panicking and our worry. And then he says, no, don't worry, give it to me. And then we, we, we give our money to him, and then he buys our snakes for us. We did not have enough money to buy these snacks. But when we gave him the one who had Iman, what we couldn't buy for ourselves. Gideon says, I don't have the strength to go and do what you are calling me to do. But then God says to him, Go in the strength that you have simply because very your strength is inadequate to do my work. But when my when your strength meets my strength, then it is able to do great things. You do not need extraordinary strength to do what God is calling you to do. All you need is to take your strength and put it in his hands and then he will do what he wants you to do for you. What is in your hands? God asked Moses after he told them how much he couldn't. And then Moses says, a staff. And to Moses it seems like something which is insignificant. But to God, this stuff was not just any ordinary stuff. This stuff was going to be used to separate the Red Sea. This stuff was going to be used to do many great things and become a symbol of deliverance for God's people. And so I'm here to tell you today, what is in your hands? I'm here to ask you today, what is in your hands? God has placed something in your hands because he has a special mission and task for you. Yes, it is insufficient to do God's work, but when you place it not in your hands, but in God's hands, then it is able to do great things. We don't have a camera, we don't have a microphone and things like that, but God said, what is in your hands? Then we had a, my iPhone, then we had a my Samsung, my Huawei and all that, and we used what God had, what we had in our hands, and God was able to do great things with what we had in our hands. And so I'm telling you today, today, to look at what you have in your hands. Because Ukulu Ukulu wants to do great things with that which you think is nothing. Um, Redemption. I, I, I think of a story that I once heard from a preacher. It's a very disgusting story, was a So it's 
about a woman who was in a bus. <laughs> she was in a bus and then she felt yabo. Yeah. So then she goes to the toilet and she relieves herself. But as she relieved herself, then her, her wallet fell into the toilet. And so it, it got immersed into that. Yeah. Yeah. And so when she realizes that her wallet is, is in the toilet, she goes back to the toilet and she takes it out. Immersed in the feces. She takes it out because that wallet had her ID, it had her passport. Nothing good to get a keyboard now. It had her wallet. It had her ID. It had, it had her, 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 her money. So she needed the wallet. She couldn't just leave her wallet in there. <laughs> Yeah. 